Uh, yeah, captain. So we we uh, the players voted the other day. Um, so Jamal Baker, Jalen House, and Jamal Mashburn um, will be our tri captains. Well deserved. Uh, happy to see House be voted in. Um, I think that shows kind of his maturity and growth because the one thing about Jalen is he always plays hard, always wants to win. But I, I think uh, I've always told him, like, I want you to be a captain. I don't vote. They vote. Um, I think Jamal Baker and Jamal Mashburn are very fitting, um, natural um, leaders. I think Jamal Baker very, very similar to Morris Shudazy, um with his approach on a daily basis. So um, I've had good hap- captains. I've had bad captains. That's on them um, to to take ownership of the locker room and uh, be an extension of myself and the coaching staff. Uh, Injury-wise, uh, Jalen House will not play tomorrow. He's still dealing with that lower body um, injury. Um, hopefully we can ramp him up a little bit more. He's doing some things, but not contact stuff. And uh, hopefully uh, we can revisit it a little bit later in the week, maybe next week, and then see if maybe he can go next Wednesday. Uh, I don't think it's anything too serious, but we don't want anything to linger as the season starts. Uh, Isaac Mushila will not go because of that uh, broken left hand. He got the cast taken off. He's progressing as well. Um, and then Nelly, obviously, you guys will ask about him. I'm anticipating him playing. Uh, we'll see how practice goes. It's entirely possible that he doesn't. Uh, there'll be a lot thrown at him. But I'm going to approach today's practice like I'm getting him ready tomorrow. Uh, but obviously, cardiovascular, all those things. I mean, it's going to take him a while. Um, but uh, we'll approach it like he's playing, and we'll obviously – Make the best decision for him. Uh, excited to have him here. That was a long process. Uh, it was a pain in the butt. Uh, thank you to the people that helped behind the scenes. Uh, and it's great to get him here. And um, hopefully uh, he's in shape. I doubt it. Uh, but obviously he's a key part uh, to what we're doing. So uh, we're excited. Um, to start off, with just to put a bow on a couple of the injury things, Isaac, what is his timetable? Do you know? So he got the cast off. I think he sees the doctor next week. Um, we're hoping he's ready for the first game. Um, I'd say that's the hopeful timetable, uh, as well as Jalen. I'd say they're both kind of on this different injuries, but similar path. Um, Isaac will definitely not play versus, um, uh, on Wednesday, but I hope he can play the first game. Not sure yet. Though. Is Jalen's injury one that, I mean, if this was a league game, he would be playing? You'd have to ask him. No, probably would be the answer. I don't think he's not playing because it's next. I think he wants to play. I would say no. He, he wouldn't play tomorrow. if It, it didn't matter what the game was. Um, I don't. So it's not overly cautious or anything. It's like he. I think we're, over, I think we're being overly cautious as well. Um he doesn't need to play tomorrow. You know what I mean? I, but I don't think it's anything really, really serious. I think if we manage it wrong, you could have issues like we had last year where he missed two league games that obviously hurt our season. And then Sebastian's concussion, is that? He's good. He's been practicing. He's good to go. Uh, Nelly, getting here, when did you uh, find out? And I lied to you when you texted me. Not the first time I've lied, and it won't be the last. Uh, I found out on, um, what day is today? Today's Wednesday. So we found out, uh, I was recruiting Monday, uh, found out from Nelly, uh, very, very, uh, Nelly doesn't understand time changes. So uh, um, got a nice wake up call early in the morning, but was excited about it. Uh, so found out 3 a.m. I was in Texas, uh, didn't sleep a lot that day. It was a long day, but it was a good day. And then just booked flights and got him uh, on a late night flight Monday. So we knew he'd be in Tuesday. How many people did you have picking him up at the airport just to make sure he got there? And everything? We were we were tracking his flight for sure, um, and uh, he was in good hands with Peyton and Chu. Um, yeah, so it was a it was a long, annoying process, but happy to get him here. Okay, is there anything else you can shed light on with that process? I mean, was this really just a piece of paper that somebody didn't sign in Nigeria? Is that as simple as it is, or? It's not as simple as that. Uh, you know, basically, over the summer, he wanted to get his visa renewed. Um, and he wanted to go home and see his family. He wanted to play for his national team. I felt like all three requests were reasonable. Um, do I have intimate knowledge of a Nigerian consulate? No, I do not. I have way more knowledge now. And if you're Nigerian, I'm not letting you go home anymore if you come play for us. Um, but... Um, 
other than that, no, it's just uh, I think that country deals with a lot of it. Um, and so it was just a long process that we couldn't speed up. It was not a it was not a question and answer, submit more information. It wasn't any of that. Um, we had no communication with anybody for two months. So that was just the reality of it. Um, and it just uh, when they did communicate with us, it was a quick process. But for that two months, it was not. I'm curious why Nelly was gone. What was the communication between you and him? Were you trying to integrate him in any way? Like Not basketball-wise. Daily Zoom or daily FaceTimes for sure. I would wake up. I'd get up at about 5 a.m., uh, partly because I'm a coach and I can't sleep, but also I want to avoid my kids because they always get up around 6. So they start annoying me at 6. Uh, so I like my quiet time. So normally it was coffee with Nelly, and I would FaceTime him uh, just to see how he was doing, um, encourage him to just stay on top of the academics. I mean, the professors were amazing and understanding. Our academic people were terrific. Um, you know, so more just trying to keep his spirits high. Uh, communicate with them so that you're not going weeks at a time without speaking to them. Not, not a lot of basketball talk by any means. What's going to be the approach integrating him with the team the next few weeks before the season starts, whether that's conditioning? Yeah, all of it. I mean, he, he's into it. Um, you, everybody struggles altitude-wise when they come here. Uh, that's always been a thing. Um, so as much as I want, I want to see him play, like I know I need to be patient. we got to get him ready for – what is it, November 6th? That's the most important thing. Um, now, those these two exhibition games are very, very valuable. Um, I wish we could do more. We can't. It's just part of the rules. But to play in front of fans, to f play with the lights on, like all that really, really helps. Um, so, you know, it, it's one of those things where we'll be patient with them. Uh, we will – give him a couple concepts offensively, get him to understand a couple terminology, but we're not going to give him everything at once. What's the first thing you did last night? Did you guys go probably not green chili right off the plane, but like... You know, I haven't asked him what he likes, red or green. I'll tell him to give the fake answer that we all give who are not from here Christmas. Uh, he got in and... Um, we took that creative picture to release on Twitter, uh, and then he just unpacked and, and relaxed. He had a bunch of stuff today, um, whether it was class, uh, compliance, you know, all the, all the stuff to kind of check the box. So I know he's been he's still eligible because he's been taking classes online. Are any of those classes in person that he was able to take online, or are they all like they, is he going to campus now? He went to campus today. He went to an in person class. Um, so as I said before, there was communication with the professors about a visa hold up they were very very understanding it wasn't like he was sitting there blowing off class uh he certainly wanted to be here so um he was in class today and um we're all kind of working together to make up that work i mean he cares about academics he's a very good student um but again it's it's one of those processes that was very very challenging but if we didn't have um, you know, the support of people on campus are Chris Bach is amazing in academics could have been even more challenging. As far as the mental part, when you say you're going to throw a lot at him, um, what's your timetable is for him to actually understand what you're trying to do? November 6th. Yeah. November 6th. That's it. I mean, it's, it's, uh, I, I don't think it's a secret that he's a key piece to the puzzle. Um, but there's going to be an understanding of certainly that it's going to take some time. But Nelly's played college basketball for three years. Um, to me, it's no different than a player getting traded and playing the next day. <laughs> as crazy as it sounds, um, that's that's going to have to be his understanding of it. Um, you know, he's coming from a program that's moderately similar to what they do and what we do. I don't know if the play calls are the same or the terminology um, and so on, but. Yeah, my timetable is he's ready to go November 6th. Uh, if he has a great practice, you need to be ready to go tomorrow. And uh, it's on me, obviously, to simplify everything. What's the biggest impact that he'll bring that team off the floor? Experience, toughness. You're looking at a player of the year, player in the MAC. I think he was all conference the other two years. I'm not positive. Um, there is nobody in our locker room Besides me and maybe Isaac Chu, I don't know if Dave Pilipovich has, Aaron Katsuma has, um, and Tarvis has, that's been in the NCAA tournament. 
Jamal Baker has. Yeah, Kentucky, Arizona. So that's what we're trying to do. That's what everybody's trying to do. So uh, he has that experience. You know, three years at Iona, he went to two NCAA tournaments and a an NIT. Um, we're trying to take the next step. You know, so I think he understands that. Um, we're trying to be as experienced as possible. I, I think that's what college basketball is all about. But um, we know our defensive issues. We were not a great shot blocking team uh, last year. He'll provide that. Um, you know, so other than that, uh, we'll kind of see. It's kind of a wait and see. Okay. How much influence did them playing here in front of a sold out crowd? You think played into? Yeah, I think it helped. Yeah, I think it helped for sure. Um, I was fortunate to go when I was recruiting um, to go watch Houston's practice. Kelvin Sampson uh, was nice enough to let me go watch his practice. And Coach Sampson has coached at a lot of places. And one of the first things he said to me was, that's the loudest gym I've ever coached in. Um, talking about the pit. It has a brand. And when people experience it, whether it's our players who want to be a part of it or um, players that have come in here, Jamal Baker, same thing. Jamal Baker loved the environment. You walk in here, you know people care. That's what you want to be a part of, not necessarily internally, whether it's administration or so on. Like, we know that's important. But you want to be a part of a community that really, really cares. So, yes, 100% Nelly, and he played well. Um but he came here and goes, okay, I know these people care. Uh, so that matters. That's that's why we are in the position that we're in is we sell that we had 14,500 and something in conference. We sell that we had five crowds over 15,000. Like that's not normal. <laughs> like that is not as common in college basketball as people think. Um, so it is an elite fan base. And, um, you know, Nelly certainly want to be a part of it. As far as the defense goes, and, and I know he's a key part of it, where are you right now, you know, a little less than two weeks before the regular season opener as compared to where you wanted to be? I know you have a lot of improvement to do. You told Field of 68 that, you know, we can't, we don't have to be great at defense, we just can't suck. Yeah. I mean, are, do you guys suck at defense right now? Or are you average? Where We're a moderate level of suck. We still kind of suck. Um, I think some of it is. I think it's a couple things. I think it's the maturation of getting stronger, tougher, bigger, right? And that's just a program evolving, um, whether that's through the players in your program getting bigger and stronger. I think if you looked at our team last year, besides Morris and Josiah, who were big, strong guys, we just weren't very big. Um, and that absolutely helps in defense. And I, one of the reasons why – not that we ran guys off, but why when we had conversations with guys, we said, we know we need to get bigger on the perimeter. You have to play mash in house a lot of minutes. It's the reality of it. They are really good players, but they're small guards. Do they need to be better defensively? Sure. Maybe they need to be a little bit more scrappy. Yes. But now how do we get bigger at the three, four, and five uh, to go along with just the growth of the program? So um, we talked about it yesterday. And I said, guys, I said, no, he's going to be back. He'll help. But, like, how are we different than last year? Last year we were a team close to the NCAA tournament, which is terrific in year two of what we kind of inherited. But how do we now make the next jump? Um, we have improved our ball movement 100%. We have improved our spacing. Uh, shot selection has been way better. But we got to be tough dudes on defense and rebounding and – uh, we'll see in two weeks. I mean, I, is it is it a finished product? No, um, but we're working on obviously progressing there. Looking could at tomorrow, could Baker you, play the three? He's going to play the three. He's yeah. going to yeah. play the three. Mm -hmm. He's kind of a junkyard dog. Yeah, he's he's one. I mean, I think at the end of the day, I tell them look themselves in the mirror and say that. Uh, are you a junk? Like when they say they play you, are you a great defender? When they play you, do they know you're going to crack them on a block out? Um, do, they, do they know when it's time to get screened? Are you going to hit them? Um, I don't know if the locker room's full of that yet, right? So we're working on that. But Baker can play the one, two, three, and four. And he's done all four in practice, um, which is great. So, yes, he's one of those for sure. 
So looking at tomorrow, obviously, you know, it's an exhibition game. You don't want to overwork anyone. But just kind of what are you kind of hoping to see tomorrow? I hope we play really well. I'm approaching it like a real game. Um, we're going to play two exhibitions. I don't love that, but you got to play a certain number of home games. I'd rather probably play like a scrimmage and then an exhibition. I mean, realistically, I wish we had four exhibition games and maybe you play two scrimmages and then two exhibitions but we're treating it like a game uh we've got a lot of new players you know and that's going to be the deal every single year so uh we're going to have a meeting before practice about what the expectations are on game day uh what the expectations are on the bench how do you sub in how do you sub out what are we doing at halftime what are we doing pre-game post-game we talk about all those things so uh we're treating it like a game i mean it I know it doesn't count, but if we lose, I know people can be pissed. So I'm going to approach this thing like it's a real game. I know this is the time of year where everyone gets to play, and there's there's a it lot says of who? well, it's, it's, it says you. It, this is like it's like Christmas. Everyone gets to get their shot. But realistically, how how is the depth for this team, and how long does it take to get to a point where you know? Yeah, depth can be great, and it can also be overrated. Um, it can be great if the wrong guy or the wrong guys get hurt and you got the right guys that could step in. Like we we were not ready to step in when Jalen House got hurt versus Air Force in Wyoming last year, and it realistically could have cost us an NCAA term berth. Um, but you cannot play 12, 13 guys. And everything changes tomorrow because of Twitter, because of the box score, because of the minutes. Now all of a sudden, what I've got to do is, is get that group in there to stay together because I always tell them this. I say, would your mom or your dad or your uncle or whoever rather you play 35 minutes and score 30 points and we lose or play five minutes, not score. They'd all rather them play 35 minutes, score 30. They all. that doesn't mean they're bad people. When I go watch my daughter play volleyball, I want her to play well. Um, this is the reality of what's going on right now in sports. And there's so much information. So, there's going to be a lot on their plate. And, uh, you know, I want them to want to win, but I also understand they've got individual goals in mind as well. I can't play everybody. And uh, I'm going to I'm gonna do my best, certainly tomorrow, um, but it, that's just not reality. In terms of depth and numbers, where would you like that number to be in terms of guys that are actually seeing some? I don't care, honestly. I mean, every team is different. Um Man, Duke's won national titles playing seven guys. Um, so I, th that doesn't matter to me. I just want uh, – obviously, you got to be healthy. Um, and depth really, really helps uh, if you have injuries. But I want the best guys on the court, you know, and I want, I want competitive practices where guys behind those starters are pushing them to get them better and having that mentality of I'm taking your spot, you know, in a healthy way. Uh, so I've, I've played a variety of ways, and uh, I've had some good teams. I've had some bad teams. Um, to me, it doesn't necessarily matter. Last year we saw Donovan really impact the St. Mary's game. Do you kind of see that for your two freshmen as coming in and, and maybe giving you some of that energy? Everybody's different. Uh, every player's different. That's why these exhibition games will be great. Um, True is a top 100 recruit, a four-star guy. They haven't gotten a lot of that around here. Um, JT, Jaden Toppin was, I mean, he is a late bloomer, and I think everybody in Texas is sitting there going, man, that kid's going to New Mexico. Um, I think he's been very, very impressive. Freshmen can be really, really good at times. You have to be good when you're tired. You have to be good when the coach is on you. You have to be good when you don't play a lot. You that's the whole that's the whole key to this whole deal. It's not about being good when you're fresh. It's about being good when you're worn down. And um, that's that's where some of these teams are able to pull away come February. Uh, so I don't know. I haven't been through the wars with them. I'm not sure um, you know how they're gonna handle everything. Do they have the talent? Yes. Do they work hard? Yes. Are they great kids? Yes. But we'll see. We'll see when the lights come on. But I like them both a lot.